story. As we now get to our main event, it is our face-to-face confrontation between The Rock and Roman Reigns. Spoiler alert, I did not like this segment very much because the dialogue given I wasn't feeling from The Rock or Cody Rhodes because I feel like the beef as of right now is with the co- with is with Cody Rhodes and The Rock. And I normally love Cody Rhodes cutting promos. I didn't love this. I felt like he was just talking about the rock and Roman being intimidated by his cousin and who is really running stuff in the bloodline. Is it the final boss? Is it the tribal chief? And then Roman talking about how dumb Cody is to trust Seth Rollins, his little brother, the shield. They're bringing up shield memories. Like I get it. I do. But I thought the material wasn't there. It wasn't hard hitting enough for me because it wasn't personal. And I thought they did a better job being personal last year and all the heat that's very personal is between The Rock and Cody Rhodes. I feel that tension. I love that tension. I appreciate that tension, but I do not feel that with Roman Reigns and Cody Rhodes and Roman when when The Rock is not there, he should absolutely be the star that takes up the air in the room and demands the acknowledgement and have everybody on their feet and not getting the what treatment. That is something I don't like, but that's based on content. If it's good content, you won't get the what treatment. If it's so-so, you're going to get it. And he didn't do much to shut it down, unfortunately. And then we have the ruse of, oh, I really lied. Did you really think I wasn't going to bring my people with me? We have Solo and Jimmy coming out. But then Cody has back up in the form of Jay and Seth Rollins to end the show, a face-to-face confrontation, no physicality involved. And that's all well and good. But I just felt like that was just a very blase ending to the show that was built up for several days on Monday Night Raw and on social media. And then we get this. It was all right. It existed. It didn't move the needle for me heading into WrestleMania at all. And it still makes me look forward to the night one main event versus night two, where that should be where the heat truly lies, Jeremy. Yeah, you're not wrong. Um, they're they're building up the feud. Oh, Y'all wild. Y'all too. Uh. Right on cue, he says, I agree, Keela. I concur. Yes. <laughs> the uh everything is building. And this this promo was like Cody telling Roman every trick that you pulled on me last year will not work. You know, it's like, I see through you, I see your game, and they're trying to elevate the tension of night one as the drama stakes for night two, because I feel like if they just try and introduce the same things over and over again that they did last year to raise the stakes, people are going to see through it. So they're trying to sidestep that level of interaction and change it, but the but the meat, the focus of the feud is suffering, but it almost doesn't matter. You know, it's like you got The Rock, you got Roman, you got all the other stuff. So it's just, just what it is. Um, I still, this is everything that I want WrestleMania to be, is the Seth, Cody, Roman, Rock feud. And it's, they're making it up as they go. It feels like they're going left and they should go right on some of these things. And I'm almost just like, maybe it doesn't matter. Maybe the aura of everyone involved has just elevated to this point that it's going to succeed unless you just will it to fail. That is very true. I think that we have to kind of skip ahead tonight too. And I have seen people wanting the most outlandish, overbooked WrestleMania main event ever. So Cody finishes his story. And I think that's the rare case when overbooking is a blessing, that you want the most outlandish bullshit you can possibly see, bloodline rules, turns galore. I want it. I actually want the Backlash 2000 chicanery of Stone Cold coming out and doing the most to help The Rock win the championship for Triple H. That's what I want to see. And then I'll be happy. I want the mess. I actually want an overbooked just absolute mess of a WrestleMania main event. I'm here for it. We need it. We can skip ahead to it because I think at this point we're running out of things to say. 
And the only meat that's left on the bone is Cody and The Rock trading barbs because there's nothing else Roman can say. And there's nothing else that Cody can say to each other at this point. The sauce right now is The Rock. He is the thing that heats it up. And we'll see how it goes when he's in Brooklyn next Monday for Raw, the final Raw before WrestleMania. But Scott, your take on the main event angle between Cody and Roman Reigns. That whole thing was just about setting up the final shot of just kind of showing the team squaring off face to face, um, setting up the in game battle for whenever uh, Captain Cody America has to open the portals <laughs> for everyone to walk through. Uh, as uh, as Thanos reigns, stands in the ring and uh, looks with his army behind him. So uh, that that's all that whole uh, that that whole segment was all set up to kind of show all of that coming together. Um, one thing I do want to touch on, though, Roman Reigns doesn't need to do anything as far as the promos, any of that. Cody needs to. Cody still needs to bring in and do his thing. Roman doesn't need to do anything. Roman is 100% on his John Cena uh, thing. Remember when John Cena was the top guy and everybody was coming after him, you know, everybody kind of was saying a lot of the same things. And that's kind of how Roman was tonight, that on Friday night. He was like, yo, you already did this. Like you, you've done this before. We give me something new. We we've, we've been here before. This is the Roman I like when he starts calling people out for saying the same thing that everybody else says for doing the same thing. I like this Roman. This is the I'm not worried about you. Do you know who I am? I I I, I do. This is me. This whole main event. This is this is the Roman I love. So it was fine. I thought Roman came across as he should. He shouldn't be worried. He shouldn't be concerned with the tag match and then him already beating Cody. This is how he should be carrying it. So I liked it. It was fine. Okay. I thought it was in the middle. Just some, mm, I just need one more. One more WrestleMania sell job and I'm good to go. But I think the matches at this point sell themselves and they'll be heated and they'll be great for night one and two. And I expect Cody come hella high water to finish the story. It will be Avengers Endgame. It'll be a cinematic Marvel masterpiece put together by WWE. And he will have $20 million worth the fireworks going off at the link to end WrestleMania night two at 12.30 a.m. Hopefully a, it, not that late. I've got a question for you. And I don't know if we're going to get another chance to, to get to this. But The Rock threatened Seth Rollins to, I could take that title away from you. Do you think on night two that Priest cashes in and costs Seth the title or drew the title? And that is helps elevate the tension that anything can happen. And Cody does not is in jeopardy going into the Roman match. Because I'm on my bullshit that Priest is cashing in on Mania. Mm. Hey, let me tell you something. You know, that that actually kind of would circle back to the promo Seth had with Drew about this all being bigger. And even if, you know, don't forget, they're still going to come after you eventually too. Yeah. And, you know, Rock walking Damian Priest out you know, with him, with having the, the brief, walking him out to the stage and Damian coming down, cashing in on both of them, that could set up Drew McIntyre being the guy to come out night two and maybe being that missing, that that piece that gives Cody's, you know, Cody's group that edge because he's like, I'm, I'm for myself anyway. Screw you for screwing me earlier. I don't care. And then he just, he claymores everybody and just walks out. How, how <laughs> else do you continue the story for Drew McIntyre other than you take away the thing that he wanted the most at the moment he wanted the most and you give him the story for next year. Mm. And you know, and I will say this, Jeremy, to what you're saying, he's not like, he's not going overboard heelish, you know, like no. in his promos and stuff like that, almost to the point where, once this feud is done, maybe he, you know, maybe he's right back to being on that babyface side. So there could be a lot to what you're saying about that as far as where Drew McIntyre fits into this whole thing. Because Damian walking out with Rock would be something because it's not like Judgment Day and Bloodline haven't worked together in the past before. Anyway. Right. I understand. It's there. It's a good one. 
I love it. I love it. I love this idea so much. It'll be a full circle moment for Seth to get cashed in on after 31. he did the cashing in. After he did the cashing in on at thirty one, one of Michael Cole's finest calls, the heist of the century, and then it happens to him in that main event. I love to see it because the clock is ticking. That money in the bank briefcase has been in his possession for almost a year. It is time for something to happen, and it could happen at the expense of poor Drew McIntyre, who would have all of the smoke for people that have screwed him over to rob him of a proper WrestleMania moment. He is one of my MVPs of, of this year, not only in promos, but on social media. It is immaculate shady throwing at various people. I cannot wait to see what he does in Chicago on Monday versus CM Punk on the mic once again. He will be a tremendous troll.